Sam Bankman Freed finally gets arrested. The FTX implosion looks, seems like it's coming to an end. We can see that there's a lot of volatility in the markets, very difficult to navigate. What perfect timing for a Goldman Sachs comment about how gold is somehow better than Bitcoin. Well, you know what? We're going to dive into that. Okay, this battle has probably been going on since the beginning, since since the beginning of the Bitcoin narrative that it would be a good store of value. Uh, it, it's probably, you know what, to be perfectly honest, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a narrative that goes all the way back to the beginning of Bitcoin, right? The battle between gold and Bitcoin, which is better, right? You've got Peter Schiff that obviously takes every opportunity that he can to dump on Bitcoin. Um, and in the meantime, gold has obviously not even come close to outperforming Bitcoin. Obviously, Bitcoin has much better qualities in terms of uh, transportability, verifiability, and et cetera. But anyways, that, that's not the point. We're not going to go into that, that whole argument. What's interesting about this is that this article came out, okay? This article came out today of all days. Uh, sorry, it came out yesterday, December 12th, okay? And just as, just as, just as the FTX exchange blew up, just as the biggest, the biggest shit coin scam exchange implodes and takes down a whole bunch of other players with it, You've got Goldman Sachs talking about the virtues of gold. So let's dive into this article. All right, so here we go. This is from Reuters. And gold is better portfolio diversifier than Bitcoin, Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs expects gold with its real demand drivers to outperform the highly volatile Bitcoin in the long term, the bank wrote in a Monday research note. And again, you, you got to pay special attention to the wording. Everything, it's always about framing and it's always about narrative. So right here, they're trying to give you the sense that, see, gold has a utility use case, right? People are going to use gold for electronics and fillings and stuff like that. So mm, my gold, my shiny rocks. Anyways, gold is less likely to be influenced by tighter financial conditions meaning it is a useful portfolio diversifier, said Goldman, especially given that gold has developed non-speculative use cases while Bitcoin is still looking for one. So sometimes th these are the kind of articles, right, that become extremely frustrating because you say to yourself, are they just disingenuous pieces of shit or, or, or do they, you know, or do they actually not know? That, that Bitcoin's use case, uh, Bitcoin has multiple use case, such as it, the fact that it's easily verifiable, easily transportable, the fact that it can't be censored, and the fact that it is the only asset that you could truly own. Like, it's like, you, you think that they know this, right? You assume they know this, but there's an off chance that they don't. And it's just absolutely ridiculous. Just complete and utter nonsense. Anyways, moving on, moving on. Here we go. All right. Although investors' willingness to explore the decentralized currency aided Bitcoin adoption, the bank forecast financial conditions will become tighter. Yeah, because no one's ever sold off their gold for cash when times got tough, because cash is what you can spend. And you see, the thing about Bitcoin is, is that it's an online, it's online digital native currency. So... It's not that, you know, you, you can't go and swap out your gold for gift cards and stuff like that online and, and go and make purchases. Like, you can't do any of that, okay? This is this is ridiculous crap. Anyways, not that that makes a difference, not that that's like a huge thing, but I'm just saying, it's they try to draw up this nonsense, right? That, that, that somehow all of a sudden gold is just this amazing asset. Really, it's been around for over 5,000 years and in 1971 just got totally checkmated right out. So if it's so amazing, it would still be backing our money, but it's not because they were able to screw us all by undoing the peg. Anyways, anyways, Bitcoin's volatility to the downside was also enhanced by systemic concerns as several large players filed for bankruptcy. It noted citing the collapse of the FTX exchange and the three AC hedge funds. Tighter liquidity should be a smaller drag on gold, which is more exposed to real demand drivers like 
Asian consumer buying, central bank monetary demand, safe haven investments, and industrial applications, it said. Moreover, gold may benefit from structurally higher macro volatility and a need to diversify equity exposure. So in other words, gold may do well because people may buy it. <laughs> That's it. It may do well because people may buy it. Nobody knows why they're buying it. They may buy it though. And based on that, we should be buying it. But again, you gotta you gotta give them credit, right? For using that fantastic language to to give you the warm and fuzzies. Asian consumer buying. And, and right away in your head, you're like, hmm, Asia does have a really large population. That could be pretty good. Central bank monetary demand. Hmm, central bank. I mean, they issue everything. They they issue all the money out of thin air. I mean, if anyone's gonna make this pump, it's them. Safe haven investments. Like right there, your your mind is just totally blown. You're, you're thinking of amazing, amazing shit. You can't even, I, I don't even know. Just everything is amazing, right? It's it, unstoppable, untouchable. Government can't stop it. This thing just goes up straight. And, and this is exactly the type of stupid things they need you to think before you go out and buy based on their advice. Okay, we're gonna offer a counter narrative to this. So here we go. Okay, so uh, Pierre Rochard wrote an essay about Bitcoin versus gold, and it was featured here in this thread by at Timeless Bitcoin. But we're actually going to dig into Pierre's uh, Pierre's essay, okay? And I think he offers some very compelling arguments uh, for Bitcoin. Of course, obviously, my bias. I'm a Bitcoiner, but at one point before Bitcoin existed, <laughs> I was a metals person. It wasn't a gold bug, but I definitely believed in having some gold and or silver and also dividend paying stocks. Even though I, even though I don't see Bitcoin as an investment, it is a savings technology. So anyways, a whole lot of changing the mindsets here. Okay. Okay. This is the part that's important to us. Bitcoin versus gold. First, we have to recognize that at worst, Bitcoin's private keys have the same uncertainties as gold. Since you can engrave your private key in gold, but the inverse isn't true, you cannot store gold in your private key. However, Bitcoin private keys on their own are useless without valid UTXOs to sign for. So the reliance on software and network and the game theory of Nakamoto consensus does contribute to Bitcoin's uncertainty. Where Bitcoin really shines in minimizing uncertainty in storage is the wide range of storage options it offers to users. A Bitcoin private key is just information, dematerialized zeros and ones, and more practically, 12 or 24 words. It can be stored in a hardware wallet, written down, stamped, engraved, and encrypted. In the best case scenario, it's impossible for an attacker to brute force access the private key. And as such, it is inaccessible if you are dead. This stands in stark contrast to gold, where there is always a brute force means of accessing the bullion. Gold's vulnerability to physical seizure led to its centralization in large government vaults, which also, it also led to gold being removed as the peg in 1971. It also made the 6102 order possible to fulfill because that gold was centralized in banks. So even though they weren't able to seize the gold from individuals. So many individuals had stored their gold in banks because they trusted them. That's how they were able to get to them, okay? So again, this goes back to our whole not your keys, not your coin thing. Forget about these exchanges. These exchanges are all honeypots. Continuing on, before you are holding Bitcoin, you have to receive it. Here too, Bitcoin has fundamentally less uncertainty relative to gold. The uncertainty with gold is whether or not you are receiving real gold. Verification of odd sized gold dust and nuggets was too costly. So coin minting emerged. Mints are centralized manufacturing facilities. So they were seized by sovereigns who then proceeded to debase the coins to earn seniorage revenues. Parlor tricks of dropping a coin for a unique auditory signature do not help in verifying 99.9% .9 versus 91.6% gold fineness. Only an assay and a sonogram can properly verify gold. In practice, this is too expensive, so it's common to leave your gold within the network of vaults certified by the London Bullion Market Association, LBMA, trusting a third party to avoid the cost of verifying every gold transfer. The cost of verifying that you received real Bitcoin, on the other hand, is negligible. You just need to run free open source node software on a computer. It's also highly scalable. The marginal cost of verifying an additional one of your transactions is unnoticeable, regardless of the value of the Bitcoin received. 
Furthermore, the level of uncertainty minimization achieved is far greater than gold verification. As you are not just verifying that you received Bitcoin, you're also verifying the total supply of Bitcoin, right? One of gold's properties that they often tout is its scarcity, but you can't actually verify its scarcity. Bitcoin, you can verify its total supply at any given time, anytime you want. Giving you the peace of mind that you own a fixed percentage of the 21 million Bitcoin, you don't need to rely on a third party to tell you that you have real Bitcoin, nor your proportion of the whole. It's cheap and easy to do it all yourself. Time is on Bitcoin's side. Whereas time reveals gold's weaknesses with people trapped between the high cost of verifying and storing gold and the high cost of trusting third parties. If you want to send your gold, you have to pay for an armored car and insurance as well as wait for weeks for it to move. Again, it is more cost effective to rely on centralized vaults and internal transfers between them. Bitcoin's transaction fees have been volatile, but they have consistently been less than the cost of a cup of coffee. While gold's cost of transportation scales as a percentage of the value of the gold being transported, transaction fees in Bitcoin scale based on the amount of data a transaction consumes very different. This means that a Bitcoin transaction may be moving tremendous amounts of value while paying the same fees as a similarly sized transaction moving a small amount of value. Bitcoin's open source software is scalable and upgradable, enabling its users to affordably control their own money, whereas gold's physicality makes its use only affordable to state actors who can subsidize its security. From the perspective of a speculative entrepreneur, Bitcoin may be the best candidate for completing a monetization trajectory to become the global currency. We see it work through the volatile markets process as imperfect humans learn about it in waves, come to appreciate its properties and take their place in the UTXO set. Pierre, I think absolutely killed it. I, I do appreciate um, that he, you know, as, as a Bitcoiner, I, I've often found that his arguments are, are level-headed. Right, he's willing to admit the he's willing to admit trade-offs. Um, he's he's willing to have those difficult type of conversations, and this is very important. So look, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, Bitcoin's properties far are far superior to gold's properties, and this well-timed article from Goldman Sachs is nothing, nothing but a fud piece to get you to separate yourself from your Bitcoin for some shiny rocks.